Hi, this is Jeff from Welch Family Homestead. And um, what I've been doing here, I wanna show you, we have an area here. I don't have it all cleared out, but I usually leave this to nature. And um, I've been leaving this to nature for about, uh, I guess close to 20 years. I'll mow it maybe once or twice a year, but then I let it go back to weeds over the grass and it gives it gives a hiding place for some of the wild animals, uh, deer, turkey, so on and so on. So now that we're building the homestead here, we want to watch out for some of the predators. And obviously, some of the wildlife is going to bring in more predators. So we're going to keep it more cut. We're going to keep it more managed. But one of the things that we're going to do with this area here, and this is obviously a beautiful area. By the way, look at this gorgeous mimosa tree right here above me. And... Uh, Talking about some beautiful blooms. And uh, let me show this to you up close. This uh, tree is covered up with these and the honeybees love the mimosa blooms. And uh, they've been blooming for a while. Some of them are starting to fade off as you can see. But one of the most beautiful trees you can find. But they're very invasive. They move around and um, have several on the property. And uh, right now the, uh, the sour wood is blooming really well, which is gonna give us that end of the summer push for a lot of nectar and uh, for the honey. And, uh, but right here, we're gonna be putting electric fencing and we're gonna be taking in all of this area here we're going to take in about maybe an acre and a half of, uh, of space, but we're going to divide it up into sections. And the reason for that is because we want to start some, uh, we want to bring some pigs into the property here. Uh, this is an area that's far enough away from everything else that um, it keeps the smell and it keeps the flies away. But at the same time, it's close enough to the garden that we can put the waste of the garden the foliage of the garden, all the waste, the, uh, the end result of the garden at, at the end of harvest, we can extend the electric fence past this hillside here on over into the garden area because the garden area obviously will have a electric fence around it already. We just attach it into it. Then we can allow the pigs to go into uh, the garden after we've harvested and then they can obviously do their their job of cleaning up all the debris from from the garden as well as doing the rooting and and wallering and that helps the soil as well uh, we're going to be turning that garden area back into grass uh, after this year it does have a slight slope kind of like this has a slight slope and because of that we've had some very torrential heavy torrential rains not the, the normal rains this year much worse than normal um, and it causes erosion when you have a sloped area here we have a better garden area on down that is more flat i've been trying to preserve the flat area because that's where we do a lot of activities for the family but it is a much better um, area for a garden because we have heavy rains it's not going to erode it's just going to uh, be fine if we do it there but when you do it in slope you are risking that the water can get faster. And, uh, and then when that erosion takes place, it gets into the streams and then from the streams, it gets into our lake. Um, and then in the winter time, we'll wind up having to drain the lake and remove the uh, silt that has washed in, usually just on the upper end of the lake. Uh, but then we'll take that silt and then redistribute it in areas where we need it. That's good dirt and we want them to preserve it and bring it back to where it needs to be. And, uh, but this year we've learned our lesson with the torrential rains that we've had. We had one rain, we had six inches of rain come down in 45 minutes, which that's very abnormal. But if we're gonna plan for abnormal, which we should, uh, it's, it's, uh, that was a good lesson learned uh, when we had some grooves cut through our garden and this displacement of some of that good soil. So we wanna make sure we don't do that anymore. So that area we're gonna turn back into grass uh, where the garden is this year. 
and um, and we're going to uh, plant uh, perennials in that area, berries, uh, maybe some vines, you know, like grapes, muscadines, things that are obviously part of our food supply, but perennials that we can mow around and not plow and just keep everything mowed in between the rows. Now, obviously there's fescue under all this weedy area. Uh, and if we keep the fescue cut or you keep everything cut, or cut, keep everything cut around four inches, the fescue will smother all the rest of it out. If we bring the hogs in here and we pull them, pull them into paddocks and we keep rotating them, what's going to happen there is they're going to naturally fertilize certain areas. They're going to root and maybe cut a few grooves in. It's not going to hurt this area. Uh, and this is an area, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind, but it has some very beautiful areas in it. This one giant tree right here, it is amazing. And I think if I don't change my mind, this is going to be the treehouse tree for the grandkids to be able to enjoy a little bit of a getaway from grandpa and their parents so they can uh, enjoy um, being a little bit free. I had tree houses when I grew up, me and my brother did. But I want to show this tree to you here. So this tree it's about, it's a huge tree. Right in this area up here where it forks up is going to be a perfect area to build a tree house. And it's got good shade below it. Good area down here. You can see where Chevy's walking below. Let me get up under here where I can kind of show you. It's really almost like a perfect hiding place under here for the kids. See this? Perfect tree house tree. And, uh, it's a massive, massive maple tree. Massive maple tree. And, I don't know what kind of tree that is. First I thought it was another wild blueberry right there, but I don't know what it is. So you see this tree here. I put my hand up against it so you can see the massiveness of it. This is a huge maple tree. It has a, another offshoot here. But up here, it forks out and makes a perfect scenario. It's a hollow tree. I don't know how far the hollowness goes up, but it would make for some good times here for the grandkids. If they had them a tree house up there, they can spend the night in the tree house and have a blast. And underneath here, under the shade of it, I've been cutting down here, trying to, clean it up some so my thoughts is I'm still up underneath the canopy of the tree all this area here can become an area where they can have a sitting area I thought about maybe putting them a a little uh, I don't know maybe a picnic table here or a sitting area and then they can have their their fun their little private area here and I'll fence this in so the hogs can't get to it Hogs are going to be more up that way, not down here. And I think they'll enjoy this. It's just it's gorgeous. And as you can see, they have plenty of room to play here on the farm. And if, uh, if need be, we can, we can trim a few limbs, get them some privacy. But I can just see a beautiful tree house up there. Fantastic. I don't know if I want to run electricity to the treehouse, but we'll tackle that thought later on. These trees right here, I planted years ago. These are all walnut trees down through here. And they came, the walnut came from the bigger walnut trees way down below there. It's been here for probably 150 years. So, so right now, as you can see, this is going to make a nice, a nice area for a few pigs. And, um, and our plans for the pigs, 
is to have a sow and a boar. Yes, we're going to have plenty of shade for them because I'm going to have it fenced in so they can not only be out here in the sun in the open area, but we want them to also have shade. And um, we're not going to let them get into the creek or the stream. We'll run water to a water trough so they can be watered from a pipe. But all of this area right here, there's a ridge here that's all forest, nice shade. What a lot of people don't know about swine, pigs, hogs, is they can't sweat. So they have to get into a, a water hole, like a mud hole, to cool off. That's why they like to waller um, and lay down in the mud. It's not that they're nasty. It's just part of their nature. They want to do that to cool off. The other thing that you can do to help the pigs to get cooler, especially in the hot summer days, is to have shade. And we have plenty of forest, as you can see, to create the shade that they need. So that's the plans, planning for the next animals, which is gonna be some pigs. And we'll put some pork in the freezers. And um, everybody likes everybody likes their pork here. And uh, so from the farm here, we'll have fish from our lake. We're stocking it with uh, trout, rainbow trout. And um, we'll have lamb. And we'll have plenty of our lamb shanks and our lamb roast and our rack of lamb and our um, tenderloins and all the goodness is coming from, from uh, you know, lamb chops, what have you. We're going to have plenty of lamb, beef from our cattle, uh, chicken from our chicken chickens and uh, so uh, right now we're not tackling anything like some of the homesteaders are like rabbits and what have you not saying that we won't in the future but right now we're just staying with chicken beef pork fish and lamb so um, and obviously vegetables fruit berries I'm a vegetable fruit berry guy I love berries I eat berries every day and nut trees Nut trees is uh, is a big deal. We do have some natural uh, wild nuts here from from the farm, hickory nuts and walnuts, but they're hard to harvest. Not hard to harvest the nut, but hard to harvest the meat of the nut out of those types of uh, of nuts. We want to plant some chestnuts and some pecan trees uh, in the near future, and um, and that'll benefit us years down the road. So. But we do have access to those uh, from other farms around, so we're not desperate for the for nuts. But one of the things, especially that I want to get set up here, is some some chestnut trees. Chestnut trees provide a lot of nutrition, and people can actually survive on uh, on chestnuts. So anyway, I'm out here. I'm sweaty. I'm hot, um, and I hope this kind of helps you understand our plans of what we're doing here to set up for. Uh, some some pigs. This is going to be a, a setting where they have plenty of space compared to a confined space. Uh, we want uh, yes, it's going to affect uh, to a certain point how much fat content will be in the uh, in the pigs, but it won't affect it enough to hurt it. It actually makes the pigs healthier to have plenty of movement, plenty of area to move around, but it also keeps the smell down. Um, if you keep them confined, uh, the pig pens that are confined are, are smelly. They, they draw a lot of flies, they draw a lot of uh, uh, issues with, with a constant smell in the air. Uh, we, we try to provide plenty of space for all the animals so that they have plenty of, of foraging areas so they're not just uh, creating a, uh, not just mud hole, but, but also a, uh, a feces hole, uh, which also creates more and more smell you know pigs do have a tendency of of um of doing that and sometimes yes we may have to come in with a front end loader and clean out some areas but we can use that manure in uh, compost piles and remove it get it to a place where it can reduce that smell and we can manage it well and if the pigs are out here foraging they're going to have a much better life than if they were cooped up in a very tight uh, space. At the same time, we have to build a little shelter for them. Even though we do have plenty of shade, we want to build a little shelter for them 
uh, for winter months and for stormy times that they can get under. It doesn't take much to do that. We just need a covering. And, uh, and that's where we'll keep also uh, a place where we can feed them in the trough without the trough being rained in. Even though that doesn't matter, pigs are fine if their trough gets rained in. Uh, in fact, we mix their feed with water so it can ferment a little bit and it helps uh, cause them to grow even faster. So I hope this helps. As we go through the planning, I'll give you some more updated videos. Uh, this is going to be a part one. A part two is going to be later on down, down the road. Uh, and I'll make sure that when we do attach part two, um, that we'll link this video to part two so that people can find uh, their way around on, uh, on the series that we're putting together in regards to how we're setting up the farm. So thank you for joining me here at Welch Family Homestead. Hope you enjoy this journey here as we, as we travel it together and we prepare for our family. Hope it helps you to prepare for your family. And, um, and I hope that when you see what we're doing, you'll learn steps that you may have missed if you didn't have, if you hadn't have seen it. This is hopefully going to help you do things a certain way. I grew up on a farm. I'm accustomed to certain things on the farm and I learn things every day from other people that may have not have grown up on a farm but they have gone through their trials and errors and I, and I take that in um, because I grew up on a situation where we were generational farmers we did things a certain way I'm okay with getting outside of my box and doing things a different way at times and uh, so I learn things from watching people's YouTube videos I learn things even though I grew up on the farm and I have my certain ways of doing things. I sometimes need to adjust. Sometimes somebody else has a better idea or they learn from someone else that has a better idea than what I'm accustomed to. And if I have a better idea than what you would not have had, unless you had listened to one of my videos, I am very thankful that I was able to help. So anyway, this is Jeff Welch here at Welch Family Homestead. Thank you for joining me and God bless.